No hot shirtless guy playing with fire and serving drinks while flirting with you? You're not gonna find that in a shoddy, nasty, smelly bar. No sexy, scatterly clad girl jiggling around the place? You're telling me you two dress like fucking waiters are the bartenders here? Yep. Kind of offended, but yep. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Valhalla. It's been a while. <laughs> Um, the last time we were here, we met a shitty detective <laughs> who thinks that things are just like the movies. Uh, R18 streaming lady <laughs> who passed out. Uh, I can't remember if we just met the two people who have relation Sorry, <laughs> my wrist just cracked. Who have relation to the mentioned party corgis from the very beginning. I don't remember a lot of things. Oh, and Gillian was sus. Good evening. Huh, I didn't expect you today. I was waiting for you to call and say you wouldn't be coming or something. Things at the Apollo Bank are getting ugly, so that means more people will be looking for a drink. Huh, you can take a break, you know. You're quite the hard worker. And the streets are not exactly safe right now. You've never been when you get down to it. And besides, I can't afford to not come with the bar closing soon. I wonder if any bar has used impending closure as a means of getting their employees to work. Seems like the total opposite would happen. Not to mention I get bored out of my brains in my apartment, so I'd rather come here anyway. And what did you say? Nothing important. Gil isn't back yet? Nope. I wouldn't worry too much about him, though. If you say so. That girl's still here? She's still here? Yep, she's sleeping so peacefully I felt bad about waking her up. So, would you mind doing that for me? Actually, yeah, I, I do mind. But you're the boss and it's kind of my fault she's here in the first place. Sorry about that. Hey, young lady, sleep another hour and we'll have to start charging you a motel fee. Mm -hmm. Oh god. Mm-hmm. Where am I? I, for I forgot that I don't remember what voice to give her. <laughs> and there I was, hoping that I wouldn't have to deal with her again. Oh, right. Uh, the shoddy downtown bar. Let's see, all my gear in place. And neither my pants nor my... Uh, panties. Shirt or bra have been displaced. Oh, it's the flat bartender. Good morning. Good evening. Evening? Oh well, it's the best night, or day of sleep I've had in quite some time. Sorry for all the trouble I may have caused you today or last night. D don't worry. You're so nice, flat bartender. Please stop calling me that. Marry me, streaming John. Thanks for taking care of me. Bye! Hello, guys and gals. Streaming Chan's back in action with her batteries reloaded. Ah! The moon, it burns! I feel like I've just unleashed something terrible into the world. Probably should have let her stay like that. She might have, she might have been sleeping forever and we wouldn't have to deal with her ever again. Come on, it's not that bad. Say, what's this bottle? The client gave it to me yesterday. A gift of sorts, I'm guessing. Yesterday? A client? Uh, was it pigtails? The, the drill hair? Oh, cool. Some sort of rum. Rum? Nice. Want me to serve you a bit of it? Mm, yeah, sure. Let's give Boss some rum. Go to the bottled drinks tab and drag it to the shaker before mixing. Bottled drinks. Grandpa booze. 
Nice. No, I wasn't gonna hit reset. Even after all this time. Here. Alright. I'm gonna enjoy this in my office, thanks. Anytime. Okay, then. <gasps> Jukebox. I tried to make, like, a story out of these titles, but it didn't go as well as I was hoping. And I took a little too long choosing everything. Time to serve... Time to serve, mix, and change lives. What? Time to serve, mix, and change lives. I don't know why that felt wrong. Oh, it was wrong. <laughs> Wait, that's not how it goes. No one here to retort. Man, it feels lonely without Gil here. I just hope the restlessness in the streets doesn't lead to a dangerous or weird types- or lead to dangerous or weird types coming in here. Aw, oh, man, why'd you have to jinx it? Hello there. Holy shit, that was a record-breaking jinx. Welcome to Valhalla. What can I get you? I'll have a blue fairy. Don't make a joke about becoming real. Don't make a joke about becoming real. On it. Let's get this, uh, brain, uh, blue fairy. All aged and mixed. One of these will make all your teeth turn blue. Hope you brush them well. Well, it doesn't have teeth. So its brain is going to turn blue. Maybe it's... <sighs> going to hit reset. I'm s I don't know why. <laughs> Here you go. Nice. Yeah. This is the thing. So, uh... The ha how are you got Do you Do you want me to, like, pour? Is there, like, an opening that I could just... Uh oh, you can grab stuff. Should have figured as much. You can drink stuff and eat. I have the same system Lilium do. Can I ask you something, uh. Miss. Oh, it is a girl. Honestly, I was just assuming uh, by. 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 by name color. <laughs> I was like, wait a second. But then at the same time, very questionable. <laughs> call me Taylor. Just Taylor. And yes, a cutie like you can call me anything. Okay, Taylor. You have to be the first person I've met that didn't go, okay, just Taylor. And I, <laughs> that's too easy. You, you're a... Uh... The, the brain in a jar, right? I'm sure not a hologram of that. Of that, I'm sure. Yep, I'm a bona fide human brain in a jar. How do you... How do you see? Do you have, like, optical nerves still working? So... Ha... Why? <laughs> this music. What? Does my handsomeness make you speech? I'm not... I'm, I, I should go for a way more neutral voice. <laughs> yes, you're the, the... The best looking brain I've ever seen. You're not something a girl sees every day, and that's saying quite a bit on these parts. Fear not, for I have a speech prepared for these situations. A speech? You're seeing one of the five great living bottled brains of the world. We are brains living in conditions that allow us to exist as any other humanoid creature. All while computers in our jars scan our activities. In a slow but steady manner, we are helping the world understand the inner workings of nature's most complex computer. I'm guessing you prepared that after being asked the same question to me too many times, huh? Not out, not out of exasperation or anything like that, mind you. I just wanted to have something thoughtful prepared. Look, I even have a couple of pamphlets with me. You want one? Yes. Sh sure. What brings one of our world's five brains in, in jars to this kind of place? Oh, I'm from around here, actually. I just wanted to take a walk for the first time in quite a bit of time. Have you come here before? 
Sadly, no. Otherwise, I'd remember a cute, a cute face like yours. Speaking of which, can I have your name? Uh, it's Jill. Jill. That's a really cute name. Thank you. Say, weren't you scared of going outside today with the commotion around and all? How strong is that glass? It didn't stop you from coming here either, did it? Yeah, you're right. It's gonna take more than cryptic but ominous news to stop me. You're awfully energetic. Did you, did you know that? Sorry, does that bother you? No, not at all, just that I figured a brain in a jar wouldn't be so happy. While I was alive, my body got to a point where there wasn't much I could do. This new state of his ex existence allows me to accomplish more than I ever could before. Plus, I'm doing something that'll help people in the long run. Like... Wait, how did you even get here? I'm s are you literally a brain in a jar? Is there more to it? Like, the... The Fallout robot, where, like, there's a whole body to it. You got little claw hands, but you're still just a brain in a jar. Wouldn't you be happy? I wonder. Do you want to make me happy, Jill? Depends on what it takes. <laughs> Suspicious glance. Don't worry, just give me a beer. Alright. Then yeah, I'll make you happy. One beer to make Taylor happy. Is that something like I actually have to make? Yeah, it is. Traditionally brewed beer has become a luxury, but this one's pretty close to the real deal. Here, a beer. Ah, yes. No matter what happens, beer's always good. It's interesting, though. Just yesterday I was talking to a client about brain uploads. You were? Yeah, we were talking about how even if you upload your brain, you'd still be here. I've thought about that, too. Do you think... The you in the cybernetic environment would feel like she was indeed transferred? Like, would you remember anything? Like waking up someplace else and so on? Hmm, that's an interesting question. I was actually thinking earlier about being able to transfer someone's brain into a Lilium. Lilum. One of the brains is being used in such an experiment, actually. They can make a functional Lilum. Unfor unfortunately, the wiring and other such stuff makes it look more creepy than anything. They aren't transferring his identity or anything, though, just wiring him to a to a body. Oh. You think someone would rather do that than float around exposed in a jar? I can see all your wrinkles. I have to admit the whole brain thing does look creepy. But the body I'm telling you about is just uncanny looking. Speaking of uncanny, how did you feel when you saw yourself like this for the first time? It was quite a shock, actually. It didn't last too long, though. I never was too attached to my body. Later in my life, that was almost literal. You know what the downside to this body is? I can't get drunk. If you want to call that a downside. If you wanted to drink alcohol for the taste, there are many alternatives. Drunkenness is part of the whole experience. Why though? Lilim can get drunk with no problem. Yeah, but in their case, their brain's a computer attached to their body. Getting drunk causes their brains to reduce the input speed to their bodies. Depending on the model, their drunk subroutine might throw in a different behavioral cycle, even. It's hard to get drunk when the whole point of your being in a jar is figuring out exactly how you work. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. Orange. Who is that? Hey, Jill. Oh. Alma. Oh, I'm trying to remember what her voice is. Was it the country one? Just, oh, Alma? Where's the courtesy one would expect from plebeian bar staff? Welcome to Valhalla, what can I get you? Happy. Not when you put it that way. Valhalla- well, <laughs> I forgot that my New Yorker and country accents blend together. <laughs> oh, God damn it! I have to think about it now. Well, hello there, beautiful. Nope, it still went country. Mm, whoa! You're my feelings with with that darling. Darling? Dar- darling? <laughs> Holy shit, how do I... <laughs> instantly forget. Well, as long as I can read, that's all that matters. 
You're my feelings with that, darling. S sorry, you don't see talking disembodied brains every day. I mean, I did work a summer in Lilla maintenance, but even then, those were talking heads. Oh, don't worry about it. At least, you're not running or fainting. Your name was Alma, right? I'm Taylor. N nice to meet you, Taylor. Say, Alma, can I buy you a drink? I'm just gonna go normal <laughs> at this rate. Sorry, I only date people who are at least 50% organic and have at least one face. Hmm. I know you're... I know just what to strive for, then. Just kidding. It'd make me happy to make you happy by buying you a drink. Does that bother you? I guess if Jill's the bartender, I don't have a problem with that. Awesome. I'll pay for your next drink, then. I can't believe I forgot how to do my New Yorker voice the moment I did Southern. That's so... It's so dumb. What will you have? I'll have a cobalt velvet. And you, Taylor? I'm fine, actually. You're gonna have me drink alone? I don't want to drink that much. Okay, then. Let's make a cobalt velvet straight from Taylor to Alma. It's like champagne served on a cup that has a bit, a bit of cola left. Whoa. That's a funny looking cup. <laughs> it's not that funny. It's just, it just tilted. That's the only thing funny about it. Bubbly, classy, burning. Why is it burning? Your drink. Hope you enjoyed it. You know, you've been nicer to me these past few- these past minutes and at least three guys have been in the last year. Judging from the way you two talk, I'm guessing you've been a client here for a while now, right? Only for about half a year or so, if my memory serves right. Really? One would think it's been longer. <sighs> Feels like it's been longer. And shut, sh shut up. <laughs> shut up. You love me and you know it. So, you just started coming here and that was it? I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> I gotta figure out a better way to... <laughs> remind myself how to do both of these accents without accidentally mixing them together. You think I would have figured it out after all this time, but nope. <laughs> well, the first time I came here, the other guy... Speaking of which, where's Pablo? Gillian. Archimedes. I don't know, adventuring or something. Anyways, the other guy served me the first time I came here. Nothing unusual there. The next time I showed up, Jill here was the one serving in. I don't know. I feel like she just gets me. There's this chemistry. We click. We click, she says. The fact that I feel more chemistry with her than with many other people is kind of sad, though. It's always good to see a nice friendship. Sadly, it's getting late and I've got to go. I'll leave you two lovely ladies alone. See ya. I'm just gonna put it, put it that it's just a brain in a jar, so things just get messed up, you know? Bye. Please come again. That Taylor sure was an ass. A bit weird at first, though. Apparently one of five brains being studied by scientists or something. Uh, there's a summary of it in this pamphlet. Let's see. Oh yeah, I've heard of them before. Can't believe I actually met one. Say, Alma. How many people are there in your family? Just curious. Well, aside from my mom and dad. I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> We're five si- sorry, four sisters and one brother. Fun funnily enough, we all have names that start with the first five letters in the alphabet. So you're the oldest one? No, I'm actually the middle kid. You're the middle kid, but your name starts with an A. Don't think too much about it. I never said the order reflected our ages. My sister, Car Carlotta. Oh yeah, isn't, isn't she supposed to be like Spanish or something? Hispanic, Spanish, or any of the Spanish speaking? <laughs> I can't remember. 
the eldest one, then there's Diana just before me. Then comes Eva, and at the bottom lies Belle. Uh, sorry, the youngest one is Bernardo. You've never been alone, I'm guessing. You can't complain about that, I guess. It helps that we know we were never five in the same house. By the time of Veta and Bernie were born, Diana and Carletta had already moved. Speaking of family, your dad came because I needed a break from everything that's been going on with them. Do you live with them? No, but Evita and Ber Bernie do. Not to mention I visit them almost every day. Anyway, my second eldest sister, Diana, just separated from her husband. It's not even been a week, but she's already got some other guy in her bed. She left her kid with her husband's parents and pretty much forgot about them. Ugh. Never mind the fact that they need to go to school and all that. Damn. Diana's life has always been messy, but these days she's really making it big. She wants time for herself to live her life. She didn't think about that when she married the guy at 20. She didn't think about that when marrying a guy she only known for like three months. You should take your own advice. Hey, I never marry someone who can catch my attention so quickly, okay? Sure, there was that one time when it almost happened, but I blame the damn stadium cam. Kiss cam. Kiss cam? Yeah, I was going out with a guy my little sister introduced to me. I'm sorry if you hear anything in the background. BT dubs. Seems he was her friend's brother or something. We went out a couple of times and he invited me to a basketball game. The mood was nice, but then later the kiss cam focused on us and instead of kissing me, he proposed. Surprise! <laughs> I almost got caught in the mood and accepted. Huh. So I take it you ejected him in a stadium on the fucking kiss cam. We went out for like three weeks. I don't know, maybe he wanted to get in my pants with the old sex on the wedding night line. But I honest to god can't understand why he thought it would be a good idea. I mean, like you could say yeah on camera and then pull him aside and be like, you Stupid idiot! <laughs> but I mean, like, if... If you're really offended by it. Or, I don't know. I don't know, like, what's the best way to go about something like that. That's crazy. That sounds too convoluted, you know, proposing and waiting for the wedding night just for sex. Never underestimate the lengths a man is going to go to get you in their bed. Yeah, I've seen more convoluted plots over the years. I'm feeling tempted to ask, but I'll pass. Want anything else? Hmm? What's that bottle? Oh yeah, it's just some rum a client gave me yesterday. A gift? What did you do? Get enough service, I'm guessing. Ka... Ka... Si... K... What? How huh? interesting name. What does it mean? Cause, I don't, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> the name of the chieftain in some native tribes. I see. Do you want me to serve you some of this? Now pass. I don't have too many good memories where rum's involved. Get me a fringe waiver instead, will you? All right. I wonder what's up with her and rum. But anyways, let's just give her a fringe waiver. I mean, considering all the crazy stuff she gets herself into. Probably nothing good. <laughs> it's like drinking ethylic alcohol with a spoonful of sugar. One fringe weaver. What kind of memories do you have with rum? Nothing you need to worry about. Okay. Alright, now it's my turn to ask questions. About what? What kind of family is your family? Well, I'm an only child. My mom and dad split. Amissibly. My mom is a violinist, so she was always away from home with the orchestra. I spent most of my time with my dad, my aunt, and my grandpa. Aside from that, I'd say my childhood was quite uneventful. Huh. Didn't you get something like your mom's artistic vein or something? I played the violin until I was around 16, I think. What made you stop? I don't know. I just kind of said that's it one day and stopped. What about cousins or the rest of your family? I see very little of them, actually. Mainly because my dad moved away from most of them. Most of my mom's family live in France to boot. So your mom's French? Yep. Can you speak French? Aw, oh, man, no! Wait, hold on. 
My hovercraft is full of eels. <laughs> what? I'm gonna take that as a no? Oh, what's that mean? Rubbish? I don't know, I can't speak French. <laughs> I did try though, but college started and I stopped taking classes. Funny thing, I actually have a cousin from my mom's side that lives close by. But you'll be hard-pressed to make me stop, spot him in a crowd. You're kinda lucky, you know? All well, my mom's side of the family lives here. The chances of me meeting someone I'm related to on the street are ridiculously high. But yeah, that's the primer on my family. Nothing too interesting, sadly. Your mom's a French violinist and you call that uninteresting? And I'm wondering if your family has ever made a fuss about you being a hacker. Hacker makes it sound too exotic. It's like if I called you a mixologist. Please don't. Ever. Sounds like something somebody would would say to make bartender sound sophisticated. See? I mean, hacker is a good way to summarize it, but it's not the best. I'm a security consultant. People want to find flaws in the security of their system, and I do my best to pinpoint where it breaks. Be it Glitch City or anywhere else in the world, they need security. I'm their woman. You've told quite a few stories about cracking into databases to retrieve info like some sort of mercenary, though. And that doesn't change the fact that hacker is not the best term to use. Makes the whole thing sound illegal when it's actually an honest job. Didn't you tell me you once secured some incriminating pics from a guy's cell phone? A mostly honest job, sheesh. What made you become a hacker, by the way? I've always been a sucker for puzzles. Even as a kid, I always had a Sudoku or crossword with me. But at some point, they started feeling kind of samey. So when I started college, I took a course on system security. It felt like the kind of puzzle I was looking for. I mean, there are all kinds of things involved in breaching that security. You need to attack this stuff from different angles. And it's something that's always evolving. The whole point of everything is to strengthen security. Every time you think you've got the gist of it, they change everything. So, it's kind of like an always evolving puzzle. A puzzle I, ha I help make harder at that. Huh, I didn't think about it that way. It is less action-y than what movies make it up to be, though. No real-time frantic typing, nothing like that. Still, seeing my code break through something, it's an amazing feeling. Will you have anything else? Hmm, I'll have a classy drink, any classy drink. Here goes nothing. Classy. Here. Bravo! You made me very happy. Woohoo, I guess. You know, sometimes I feel you know me better than all the guys I've been with. I feel compelled to ask how many guys you've been with. If we're talking about serious, long-lasting relationships, just a handful. Casual dating and one-night stands, on the other hand. Why do that? Why go through so many people? Hey, it's not like I take every guy I see to bed. Who do you take me for? You know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. That's something I don't have an answer to, actually. Maybe I'm just a romantic that loves having someone to cuddle with. Maybe I just get lonely. Maybe there's a deeper-seated psychological reason behind it all. Maybe I'm just horny. Whatever the case, I just kind of feel like it's a quest. I shouldn't give up, but give up yet. Well, it's not like I'm too different. Until recently, I too had a streak of one-night stands. Really? What made you stop? Reasons that don't start with a D and end with a D Donna? What is it? Tell me. Maybe later. It's time for my break. Come with me. Not why. Can I stay here away from the cold? I don't trust you. You could fit a bottle between those tits of yours and nobody would know. Why not just say please come and let's keep talking at the back of the bar? You got the message. Now come. Guide me then. Boss, I'm taking a break. Call me if anyone comes in. Sure, sure. Oh, cold, 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 cold. Sure is chilly out there. It's kind of refreshing. The hobo out there seems like a nice guy. Billy Vine? Yeah, he's a cool guy. Very respectful. Apparently, he got into some legal trouble and that's why he's like that. Really? You could also just be a very nice crackhead, though. So, are you gonna tell me? What? Why did you stop having one night stands and all that? I started working here. I don't know. After I started working here, I felt like I didn't need to do that anymore. 
Maybe I was just lonely? No, oh, how cute. I also got fed up with everyone complaining about me smoking in the bed. On the bed. You're gonna burn the bed with that. I almost said that's how forest fires start. <laughs> I guess, like, in a way. Yeah, yeah. If you ever need a hug, just let me know. You don't need one that stands for that. You left me thinking, though. What's your thing? Your fetish. You strike me as a kind of having overpower. <laughs> fetish. Of sorts. You want to feel totally swayed by someone, have consensual yet forceful. Sex. With your partner. Did I hit bullseye? You have quite the imagination, girl. Oh no, god damn. Honey! Some service here. I'm here, don't scream. Oh, were you two hanging at the back of the bar? What kind of stuff were you doing? Just talking. Is that what they call it these days? What do you want? Something soft, something sweet. No alcohol, please. Wouldn't it be the same if you just grabbed a soda from a vending machine? But I like you! Do you dislike my presence so much? Sweet and non-alcoholic, you say. Alright. Dorothy wants something sweet and alcoholic-free. No, I don't remember any of the drinks. Now I have to go through them all. Does this count? It says optional. Hold on, let me... I think... Just a chocolate milk, basically. This better work, because I don't remember. On the rocks, blended. Here you go. You know, this kind of treatment's not precisely good for sales. Did I catch you in a bad mood? I can't tell if that meant it was wrong. Oh no. Oh, but how impolite of me. Hmm? I'm Lovely and my name is Dorothy. Dorothy Hayes, nice to meet you. Oh, I'm Alma. The pleasure's mine. Dorothy, you say? Yep, why? Nothing, I guess I've heard about you before. Really? What kind of stuff? Tell me, tell me! Mostly about your, uh, pluckiness. And here I was thinking it was because I'm a sex worker. <laughs> so much for trying to be subtle. Hey, I take pride in my job. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing it. Isn't it dangerous? I know how to take care of myself. Thank you very much. She has the she has like finger cannons. She she's fine. Where do you work, Alma? I'm a hacker. Really? A full-fledged hacker? Not the kind that sees a computer logged in some account and says that's hacking, right? I thought you said not to call you a hacker! No, of course not. I've always been curious about how being a hacker works. Do you just start typing really fast while waiting for something to happen? No. I can explain, but I don't know if you'll get it. You won't know until you try, right? Last time I said that I had to jam the plastic replica of a halogen light bulb up a grown man's ass. It was a success. Um, <clears throat> okay then. Well, let me try to explain in general how it works. Let's say I have to retrieve information from a company's database. Why do we have to go over this? I know. I know specifically. I don't want to listen to this. <laughs> First, I do some research on the target, OS, servers, how the information's stored, and all that. There have been a couple of occasions where I had to go in blind, but they're the exception rather than the rule. First, I secure things from my side. I start working behind proxies, websites, and through other more vulner vulnerable computers I find on the way. I just noticed that the thing on the TV has just been there the whole time. I don't know what it is. Is it... 
Those are just supposed to be advertisements, right? The hell is it advertising? Uh huh. After that, I start tasting the networks. I go through the basic protocols, try known exploits as long as they don't trigger any alarm. Once I've tested the ground, the fun starts. I go through all the security protocols and look to bypass them. Sometimes I have to look deeper into the code for the password itself. Huh, I see. Then, when I'm finally in, I go and retrieve user privileges. After that, I go and try to become a super user and get what I need. Uh, how do you do that? Well, there are a couple of ways. I can use a pre-made program to hack into an already existing account. I can use info someone already gave me. But the usual way is using a buffer overflow. B buff B what happens next? What happens next? I create a backdoor in the system before leaving and covering my tracks. I can't... I can't handle it anymore. Alma, <laughs> Alma, hack me. Hack me like you've never hacked anything before. Eh? Make my buffer overflow, create a backdoor, and yes, believe your user privileges, find flaws in my security. I think I'm gonna go home now. S sorry, I got carried away. No shit, what happened? Have you seen those movies or books where a couple does something like paint a picture or cook? But they make it sound like they're having... <laughs> like they're having sex instead. Ooh. Of course when Dorothy is here, it's all she thinks about. Suggest... Suggested. She... Oh my god. S suggestive... Sayings, yeah. Well, that whole thing was kind of like that for me. Really? I guess humans don't really get it because their minds don't upload to ne networks or anything. But trust me, if you recorded yourself giving a really, really detailed explanation in a really sexy voice, <laughs> you'd make millions. <laughs> Horny Lilum are an unexploited market. I uh, see. <laughs> looks like that's money for me to think about. Oh, looks like my ride's here. <laughs> Your ride? Yep, my brother-in-law came to look for me. Is it alright to ask that from him? It's okay, I've known him since preschool. It just so happened that he got married to my sister. Hey Dorothy, you need a ride? Can you drop me by 3rd Street? Sure, it's on the way. Yay! I'll take your offer then. Bye honey! Later, Jill. Take care, you two. The street seems noisy. Oh, a client. Hello, welcome to Valhalla. What can I get? Uh... <sighs> Question mark on their forehead. Such a small yet comfortable place. Truly an oasis of spiritual drinks in the midst of the suburban desert. A place where lost and corrupt souls can gather to forget their troubles for a while. A nest where everyone from the most pathetic scum to the vilest trash junkie can sit to kill their insides. Truly a real persona non grata. That's Latin for mysterious place, by the way. I'm so smart and sophisticated. <laughs> Alright, we got ourselves a persona non grata here. What will you have, then? Seventeen. D uh... What? I said seventeen. Seven plus teen. Oh, what does that mean? What does it mean to you? Just to be sure, seventeen is about the drink you want, right? Only if you want it to be. Mm, what the f- <laughs> What does that mean? Uh, what's the seventeenth letter? How is this seventeen? I don't know what you mean by seventeen! You son of a- if you want something specific, just say it, you son of a bitch! It isn't. You said seventeen would only be related to your drink if I thought it was, and I think it isn't. Ooh, you subverted my expectations by taking me literally sneaky. What brings you here, Mr... I'm Ormondio. Virgi... Vir Vir Virgilio... Vir Vir 
Virgilio. Armandio. See, I introduced myself using the Asian order because that's a lot more polite. Okay, right. And I came here looking for an otherworldly, otherworldly experience. I was passing by and saw this place is called Valhalla. I want to see the souls of resting warriors, the wounded spirits of noble souls. If you came here earlier, you would have seen a lady pass out on the floor. The golden hall full of never-ending banquets, the lively Valkyries looking over them. We have some arcade machines on the corner. No, 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 you're taking me too literally. You see, I'm being poetic, I'm giving a mystic air to a mundane affair. I wanted to see drunk people, I wanted to see waitresses and food, while well, you should have came here earlier. I wanted to see the bar in all of its decadent glory. Well, you're out of luck. Today's been quite the slow day. Not that I'm very surprised, given how things have been going in the streets, though. Humans are a nasty bunch. That much is true. Making a ruckus, coming at each other, but that's to be expected from the only mammal to kill its own. That's not true. We aren't the only mammal that kill... that kill its own? I'm no zoologist, but I'm pretty sure that's not the case. Oh yeah, then give me an example, not zoologist, bartender. Like I said, I don't know exact details, I just know that isn't right. Uh... Every animal kills each other in territory dispute. Hello? That's like, basic. It's like you've never went to school or read a book or watched a documentary on animals before. Memory serves right. Once a lion takes over a pride, every cub born from another lion is killed or something. <laughs> takes over a pride? You can't take over pride. Pride isn't a tangible thing. You need to stop making things up, non-zoologist bartender. Please get out of this bar. But going back on topic, do you know what the number 17 means? I don't know, and I'm sure what you're gonna say is gonna be utter bullshit, so I don't really care. The atomic number of chlorine? No, and Chloe is a name, not a number, you know. <laughs> I hate you! <sighs> I'd rather have Streamer Chan back. Or Dorothy. Or both. The group are hot. Ha halogens, halogens, whatever, are in the periodic table. Stop making up words like halogens, and periodic, and table. Okay then, I give up. Seventeen is us. Uh. Every human has seventeen pairs of chromosomes. That number is the whole foundation of you and me. I'm not a scientist. I feel that is wrong. <laughs> it's 23. What is? Humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes, not 17. <sighs> I'm already so tired. <laughs> well, they're both primal numbers, so it's the same idea. Primal. Do you want anything else? Can you leave? I'd like a single plum floating in perfume served on a man's hat. Oh my god, somebody actually ordered it! Okay. He wants a plum floating perfume in a son of a bitch. Somebody finally ordered it! <laughs> After giving it to so many people who didn't want it. It's finally been ordered. I don't know whether to feel happy or sickened. <laughs> Here. Huh, you didn't- wait, you did. Enjoy. I will. I'll drink this, um, perfume. You don't really have to. Yeah, that'd be silly. You win this round, bartender. Hey, bartender. Have you ever thought about death? Constantly. How? What if we're already dead, both of us? What? 
What if we're all in a simulation? What tells you I even existed before I entered that door? How can you assure me that this reality is real and we're not in fact in heaven or hell all along? Or limbo? What if everything up to this point is just some stupid story written by an unemployed 20-something in his room? I could punch you to make you feel reality. I don't care about any of that, actually. This reality is real for me, and that's all that matters. Such a close-minded way of seeing things. You need to get away from factual facts. Open your mind to things beyond your reach. You'll never reach enlightenment if you don't start. The habanero has started! It means a twilight of the gods in German, by the way. Well, you're on your own, bartender. Enjoy your new world order! Uh, the what? A couple of nearby cars exploded, it seems. Oh, hell. Let me take a look out the window. Be careful. I see lots of flashes in the distance, most likely gunshots. Jill, come here a sec. What? About 5 GB of reports proving that several White Knight squads have been used to cover. Illegal actions were released to the public by an unknown Arcanist group. For receiving reports of several units going rogue, and using their weapons to hunt down anyone they find on the street. Several counter-terrorism forces from neighboring cities have been dispatched in order su to subdue the crazed units after a plea from the Vice President. We're still waiting for a declaration from Zaibatsu Corps' CEO on the, on the subject, but until then... Things are ugly in and outside of that bank, it seems. I'd recommend you stay here tonight. It's too dangerous to even think about going outside. What if they break in? They won't. Even then, the bar has quite the security system. And I'll be here protecting you as an added bonus. <sighs> yeah, I guess I'll stay tonight. I'll get you the spare mattress I have. Do you mind sleeping in my office? No, I guess it's fine. Good. Huh. <sighs> Let's hope everything gets solved by the morning. I'll have Zang Zan Kato on hand, just in case. The metal bat with nails. There's nothing it can't bash. <laughs> Sigh. Gil. Dorsey. Gil. Four. Hope everything's better by tomorrow. Uh, I made two mistakes. I don't... Oh, I know what the first one was. Is there even one with no alcohol? I don't even remember. Whatever. Whatever. Uh, sleep tight. I'll protect you. Three hundred dollars. Rise and shine. We watch. We protect. <sighs> Good morning. It's eleven a.m. though. That's morning for me on the weekends, and any other day. How's everything outside? Still noisy, but forces have been deployed to take care of most of them, at least. How so? Zaibatu Corps' president is pleading with anyone to stop the rogue white knights. Neighboring city forces were deployed quickly and have subdued most of the opposition. There have been also- There have also been reports of white knights just freezing, like we're, like they're petrified somehow. Make it sound like some god suddenly decided to put everything in place. Well, I'm just glad no bullets are flying in and out of the whole building. Sure, there's still some bad apples out, and it's not really safe yet, but it was worse last night. There also seems to be a civilian force lynching any white knight they spot. So not only are the white knights a problem, regular folks are on edge too. Wonder if Say is okay. Should we be worried about Gil? That kid knows how to take care of himself. I'm sure that whatever it is that he's doing, he's safe. Dare I say, even safer wherever he is than... than here. I sure hope so. Are we gonna work today? No, things are too nasty right now. Let's take the Sunday off. Oh, alright. Say, do you want me to help you get your... get to your apartment? Actually, yeah, I'd appreciate that. Okay then. Let me lock things up and we'll go. We'll grab something for lunch on the way. Sounds good. And here we are. Home sweet home, thanks a lot. 
Uh, no, it's just repeating the name. Hey boss, wanna hang out for a bit? Hmm? Yeah, grab a beer, chill out for a bit, and mostly to thank you for helping me. Well, I don't have much to do anyway, so yeah, sure. I did tell you you should invite me to your apartment sometime, didn't I? Oh, yeah, yeah, you did. What worries me a bit is that beer always leads to something else. Two more beer? I was gonna say to one of us going through the Spanish announcer's table. But I think we're safe here. Come on in, then. Excuse me? Want one? Sorry, I don't smoke. Don't mind me, though. Smoke if you wanna. Thanks. Say, how is the chilly weather treating you? It gets cold from time to time, but nothing the Kotatsu and the heater can't fix. Alright, boss. You're not very good with the cold, are you? You know it. You didn't bring your jacket here, either. Yeah, I left it at home when going to the bar yesterday. It wasn't that cold, and I didn't expect to spend the night at the bar. Would you like a sweater or something? Oh, don't mind me. I insist. I have this hoodie from some time ago, and it was too big for me. Why buy it, then? It was dirt cheap. Right. Wait, where did you get this one? Don't know, some flea market ages ago. Why? Nothing, it's just like one I had many years ago. What happened to it? Too much use, it just ripped. I see. You can keep it if you want, I never use it anyway. Um, we'll see. Come to think of it, how old are you, boss? I'm eternal- I'm <laughs> eternally 17. Fair enough, 17 plus how much? 17 plus I'd have to cut your tongue if you knew. 69, right? The easiest number. <laughs> Alright. Let me go change into something more comfortable. Take your time. Kitty cat. Say, Jill, there's a blue-eyed mass of black fur glaring in my direction. Hmm? Oh, that's just four. It's just where of any new visi visitors. Cats will be cats, I guess. They'll warm up quickly, though, and just give them time. He's unusual looking. Blue eyes on a black cat. They usually have green. Yeah, weird, huh? At first I thought they were like that because he was small, but they never changed. Do you have any pets, boss? Back at home, we had a bear. Uh, I see. <laughs> oh. Oh, I see a what? Good old Bosco. He kept intruders away better than any dog. Right. Hmm. This picture here isn't something you see every day. What? Me taking some ha sappy pic? No, a framed picture on printed paper. It's so vintage. Who are these? That's, uh... The one on the right is Lenore, my ex-girlfriend. The one on the left is Gabrielle, her sister. Huh? Is this pic recent, or...? Actually, that one's from three to four years ago. You look exactly the same. I'm only 27, what did you expect? That's why they say kids are the ones that get old. Thought it was recent because you don't usually see people displaying pictures of their exes so openly. Let alone a printed and framed one. Did you two break up on good terms then? You even hesitated a bit when calling her your ex. <sighs> Let's just say that everything ended with both of us saying mean things. And me storming out of her house, breaking a couple of things on the way out. We never broke up formally, and I guess I just still have feelings for her. I just went away, I haven't said a word since. Really, it's hard to picture you doing such a thing, and you look so happy in the pic. Why have her pic out like this, then? I just couldn't get get my mind off anything that Alma said to me. About missing having the warmth of someone else pressed against your side. Using them as a pillow, mixing your, your perfume with theirs. Putting your head on their chest, listening to their breathing as they pet your head. Dozing off knowing they're there, watching you, protecting you. Damn, you remembered everything. I don't know, I feel nostalgic. Nostalgic. I felt nostalgic, then miserable. Now I'll just put this away. I didn't mean to open that can of worms. I've been meaning to apologize, but I feel like it's too late now. Whenever I go out, there's this fear in the back of my head that I'll meet her in the street. I just don't know if I could face her again, let alone talk to her. That'd be a mess. It's never too late to apologize, Jill. Maybe. Hmm. What's that on the table? Looks like an M- It's nothing, nothing! Now please give that to me. Lope, alright. I saw nothing, don't worry. Anyway, let's grab some beers. Guide me. What was the envelope? Because I don't remember. Damn, you have lots of beer. Yeah.
beer so far. What if I just go ham on it? I can't. I gotta do it slowly. Are we gonna drink it all? I guess I'm just gonna keep going until it lets me out. Oh. <laughs> well, I hit space. It didn't do anything. Did it not register because I have the drinking button here? Well, the BTC gives me discounts and a point card I can use every time I buy their alcohol. With that, beer is actually the cheapest drink I can get. Is there any difference between the drink drinks at the bar and these? Drinks at the bar are more addictive, flavorful, and also stronger than the ones they sell in stores. Besides, the one in the bar is more of a double IPA than one... This one is more of a pilsner. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> in English, please. This one's lighter in color and lighter in flavor. Don't know? It doesn't taste like a lighter to me. <laughs> is this one made with that, um... What was the name of the base liquid you use at the bar again? Neutrogenic... Dichometrical lido lidogenol or NDL. It was a supplement or something, right? It was an experimental fluid they created to replace water when the maiden kissed polluted water supplies. The effects of pollution turned out to be temporary, so NDL never went into mass production. But the BTC still commissioned it for use in bars. And this one made with is this one made with it? Let's see. Here it is, near the end. NDL and cornstarch. Cornstarch? It serves as a stabilizer, if I remember correctly. They need it for packaged drinks. I see, and I just realized something. What? You're a nerd, Jill. Guilty as charged. I still have that bottle of rum somewhere. Do you want some of it? Will you have some, too? Not really, no. Then leave it like that. I'm not letting you drink beer alone. That's not how drinking with friends works. Do you consider me a friend then, boss? Why wouldn't I? Don't know. What with being my boss and all, I was never too sure. Well, in case you had any doubts, yes, I consider you one of my best friends. Besides, you and Gil are always so diligent and responsible that I'm boss in name only anyway. It's good to know. On a, side, on a side note, it surprises me you kept that poster of me in the room. And even more that you hung it in plain sight. When I gave it to you, it was more or less a joke, you know. Does it make you uncomfortable? If it doesn't make you uncomfortable, why would it make me uncomfortable? It's my own face, and I gave it to you. <laughs> I'm still wondering why you did it, though. Aside from filling an empty spot in the wall, I don't really know. I thought it was funny, too. I guess it's like if someone gave, gave you... I don't know. A dildo shaped trophy or something, and you had it there as a conversation starter. Although no one comes here anyway, so it's kind of pointless. What, no steamy nights of passion? Not since a year ago, I think. I'd rather not talk about that. About what happened then. Did someone hurt you? Because if they did, I can go dish out the pain. No, nothing of the sort. A different kind of mess. Uncomfortable mess, and not being able to have sexy talk for reasons mess. I picked a poor time to be reading any of this. Glad to know you have my back, though. And that's what friends are for. <laughs> oh no, her face is red. Maybe I should stop. But I already opened this one. Wait, you talk about the poster and compare it to having... That type of trophy. That's a little... Did you just call me a dildo <laughs> That's what friends are for. 
Hey Jill, where did you get that black four ball? Well, as with any black cat or house cat in general, he's basically a stray. Okay, I'll stop here. I don't. Her face is so red. I found him in the alleys near the building not long after I moved here, I think. Ah, oh, I see. It was quite the sight, though. He was cornered by all these dogs, but they were keeping their distance. He was holding his ground, hissing and scratching as much as he could. There was a fried chicken bucket nearby that had some rain water in it, so I threw the water over the dogs. They ran, and I figured that cat's mom would be nearby, so I left. Then I noticed people looking in my direction as I walked. Turns out the little shit started following me. So you brought it home. At first, I wanted to see if I could find him a new home, but... Having him welcome me whenever I came back was just too much for my heart, so we ended up staying. It was destiny, girl. When he came, he was so cute, though. Not like the fat mass that's sleeping on the table. Nay, hey, you're not a spring chicken yourself, you know. Oh-ho. Uh -huh. Shit, I actually did that in front of someone else. <laughs> oh. Anyway. Don't anyway me. Do you normally speak for your cat like that? Maybe. Uh, I wonder if Gil's alright. You worried about him? You make it sound like I'm some emotionless robot. You can be hard to read. I wouldn't worry about Gil so much, though. There's three things I know for certain about him. First, he can take care of himself. Second, you can sincerely trust him. And third, he absolutely hates bell pepper. He does? I've seen him even reject food that has been in contact with it. Man, what a baby. Unless he's allergic or something. He's not. Man, what a baby. How did you meet such a guy? He showed up in, in the door of the bar, like a stray. He what? Well, it was shortly after the whole incident with Robert and the levitation potion. Right, levitation potion. It was a slow day and he just showed up at the bar. I offered him a drink, but he said he didn't have any money on him. I couldn't leave him alone, so I pretty much gave him the drinks for free. And after a couple, he broke down crying. He... huh? I don't know what he did, but he was really, really regretting it. He wanted a second chance or whatever, and I told him if he could wash himself, I'd find him a job. And I'll be damned, he, lo he looked totally different the next day. Damn. He got plastic surgery? <laughs> I tried and failed to find out anything about him. So I decided to take him at face value. I'd judge him from what he did as an employee. And then, aside from the occasional sudden escapade, he's been as loyal as loyal gets. I returned the favor in kind, covering his ass from time to time. Sometimes literally. What surprises me is that you took him in so easily. I can take care of myself, and I always kept an eye on him. And besides, after the whole Robert thing, I couldn't ignore someone that desperate so easily. I see. You've made the bar more lively yourself, you know. How so? Well, with the regulars you've earned, of course. Like that blonde titty hacker, <laughs> I can't remember her name. Alma? I was gonna say... Armit Armitage? Well, she's hot, I'll give her that much. She's also a nice person in general, but damn, she's hot. <laughs> Are you alright, Jill? Yeah, why? Your, your face is kind of red. It's weird to see you say so openly that someone's hot. Hey, I'm not on duty right now. <laughs> what? Even you can see she has a hot bot, boss. You'll find no objections from me. Oops, hit that too fast. I mean, I'd be lying if I said I hadn't thought about taking her to a room and... <laughs> oh, I should put down this. Jill, you sure you aren't drunk? No. I am, I mean, I'm sure I'm not, I mean, um, <clears throat> but those are thoughts I leave to myself. I don't think I can handle her in a relationship. She has weird standards. Then, and she's as straight as straight gets. She's still a lovely person, though, that she became a regular as a, is a blessing. Any regular is a blessing when you get down to it. There's, al <laughs> There's also that sex worker robot girl. Nah, Dorothy. She intrigues me, though. I've seen lots of sex workers over the years, and she seems pretty giddy. It's not that she likes her job, but rather that she takes it, takes to it with such childish excitement. I've kind of noticed that too, but then again, Lilum can be weird. You think? Lilum operate in some really foreign logic. I mean, they don't really share our fear of mortality. 
Even if their bodies are destroyed, their minds are already backed up in the collective source. If they lose an arm, they can reattach it or replace it. Depending on the circumstances, they might not even feel pain at all. It's not like they haven't attached human like emotions like fear or love, but they are different. Attained. Did I say attachment? Like a different culture if you must. Hmm. I didn't see it that way. Aside from that, Dorothy is a DFC72. It's a social interact interactions model or something. Let, let them get positive reinforcement straight from their bodies if they're fulfilling their main purpose, so... I'm guessing she gets a built-in push whenever she's in a meaningful or challenging social interaction. Interesting. The name Lilum is a bit weird, though. It is? You'd expect them to be called bots or dolls, but Lilum doesn't convey the image of automatons. Just a tip, bots and dolls are considered slurs by them. Bot is akin to calling them retarded, and doll is like calling them fake. Thanks for the advice. That aside, do you know why they're called Lilum? As far as I know, because they all come from a bigger AI called Lilith. And Lilum are Lilith's offspring in Jewish folklore. Mm. Hey, speaking of names, why don't you like being called by your full name? I have no idea what you're talking about. Don't act stupid. Back when you first transferred, I called you Julianne, and you almost tore me a new one with your glare. See, like that. It's no big secret, but it's one of those things that feel silly when you say it out loud. Try me. Well, did you ever watch Model Warrior Julianne? <laughs> My voice is cracking. Ah! Not all of it, not all of it, but my little sister's a big fan of the reruns. Back when I was in elementary school, I was a huge fan of the show. I had everything from the dolls to the costumes to the lunch boxes. It didn't help that it was one of those shows that got strapped literally everywhere. I saw a couple of episo episodes once, they were really nice. It was beyond nice. The show's about a model who can transform into an armor-clad magic knight. She fights demons born from greed and vanity. How the show presented Jules hating her job because it invited enemies, and yet still found solace in trying to be a role model. Hell, the main character wasn't a kid, Julianne was an adult that became younger when transformed. I'd say it was a pretty ambitious kid show. Even by today's standards. Just the fact that her enemies were literally issues dealing with beauty standards of body image. Challenging as fuck. Well, you got excited there. And that's the problem. Back then, I was obsessed with Jules. I sang the songs just like her. I could even recite full chapters. But something tells me you still can. That's besides the point. It was nice while I was in elementary school, but then I went to middle school. And what a surprise. Tweens are jackasses. They went out of their way to tease me about the things I did back then. I don't hold it against Jules, I always hold my grudge against those fuck jobs. It sounds rough. You know how most girls worry about their thighs at that age? I worried about jerk asses singing the theme tune of the show mocking me. Anyways, every time someone calls me Julianne or Jules, I instinctively react negatively. Pavlov would be proud of me. I never talked about it because I find the whole thing too silly in retrospect. I think this deserves... That's just... And yet it affects you even today. There's nothing wrong with it, though. It's actually kind of reasonable. I sure hope so. Come to think of it, what kind of kid were you, boss? When I was a toddler, I was the kind to always fight with kids bigger than me. Then puberty happened and I became the Merriam-Webster definition of shallow jerkwad. Around the time I turned 16, I realized what an idiot I was and went on to become who I am today. And the less I talk about those years from 12 to 15, the better. Fair enough. Say, boss. How do you like the men? 2D. 2D? Yes, I don't mind anything as long as that thing is too, is cute or 2D. How about you? Uh. Back in high school, I liked them funny. In college, I liked them successful. After a while, I just wanted them stable, and now... And now... I don't know. I stopped caring about them being funny. My high school boyfriend started conf conflating cheering me up with mocking me when I'm down. I also stopped caring about them being successful and... Let's open another one. <laughs> I realized half the time they had no qualms about cheating with me or on me. 
and I stopped caring about them being stable. I realized they were the kind of person I was trying not to become. Not become stable? There was this guy who became so obsessed with holding a stable job that he hated. He started being physically ill. Not only that, the last time I managed to get some, I ended up throwing the guy out. He took incredible offense with how I smoked on the bed. <laughs> the bed could catch fire, you know. Not you too. I kind of envy Alma for that. At least when she dumps a guy, it's for less petty reasons. <sighs> Are you okay? I'm fine. It's just... It all boils down to the fact that I can't get my mind off Lenore lately. She was... She was all of what I just said. She made me laugh. She had a good position and was stable. She was also smart, caring, and why can't I get my mind off the whole thing? It's... It's maddening. We're gonna finish this at this rate. Maybe I should go and apologize. Maybe I should. Maybe that will make me rest easier at night. Get my mind off things for a while. I don't even care about going back to her, but... Ugh. Hey, Jill, have you tried thinking about clothes for four? Clothes for... <laughs> Listen, I know how you must feel. But you can't let all of that cloud your senses. Next time you feel overwhelmed by those thoughts, try distracting yourself. Like with... Say, thinking what kind of clothes you can put on four. Yeah. You know, boss, I'm a bit curious about your circle of friends. What kind of people do you have in it? And keep in mind you're included in the circle, too. So any insults you hurl will apply right back at you. Anyways, I have this friend I've known for a long time. Red-headed, glasses-wearing gun nut called Iris. The one you called for the helmet thing? That one. She's managing a BTC bar in Panama right now, if I remember correctly. She's managing a bar, too? I got the idea from her, actually. Oh. It's called N1... Uh, Nirvana. And if you thought the city was dangerous, you should see the people she has to deal with there. Piracy ain't nothing to fuck with. And it means it's an annex to another business. What else does she do there? I think the bar was originally her hotel's bar. She moved the bar to its own building elsewhere and opened Nirvana... Nirvana B. In the hotel instead. Weird decision. I believe she said she wanted a place away from the noisy rich tourists that go to the hotel. So that bar is her woman cave. Woman cave. That aside, let's see. Friends, friends. I guess there's also my little sister, but that's a given. Oh, there's also my old partner from when I was with the Neo San, Fran Neo San Francisco police force. Good old Lexi. Should give her a call sometime. May you're in the what? I've done lots of things, Jill. I spent a short time collaborating with the police force. I've been a wrestler and MMA fighter. Chimney cleaner, lumberjack, pet shop attendant, corporate mascot. Corporate what? I still see my face on some websites from time to time. Anyways, aside from you, Gil, my sis, Cyrus, and Lexi, hmm. I guess there's a lot of people that don't want to see me in harm's way. Mostly because they're the ones that want to hurt me. What about you? I guess I have acquaintances here and there. Back at home in college, I went out a lot. But it felt more like going out was a pleasure rather than the people involved. Aside from you and Gail, my closest friend since moving here is Alma. Uh, oh, and Dorothy. I mean, sure, there's always four, but that's a cat. That's a cat. A hermit that refuses to go out. But that cat's. And you know, th he's a cat. Hey, a cat's fine too, you know. Okay, boss, I have to know. About what? About your arm. I'd rather not talk about it. Come on, I want to know how you got it. Fine. Yeah? I had to use a couple of favors to get it. I accepted no less than state-of-the-art tech. That's how I got it. That's technically correct, but come on! Why do you want to know how I got it? I just want to know more about you. You're always so cool and awesome, and... Can you at least tell me if it does something cool? Does it go pew pew pew? It does have a couple of utilities installed, yeah. There's a HDD in the forearm I use to save assorted data. It has a flashlight and a clock, but many prosthetic arms have those nowadays, kind of like watches. How did you feel when you lost it? To be honest, I was sad, but I was also satisfied. 
Yeah, I lost my dominant arm, but its sacrifice helps a bigger purpose. If I had to lose another limb to accomplish such a thing again, I'd totally do it. But of course, I just hope it doesn't come to that ever again. Now you're just teasing me. You'll hear nothing else from me, young lady. Chapter 2! Wait, how many chapters are in this? How long is this game? Your electricity coming right up. Your electricity bill will be sent out on the 24th. Make sure you have 8,000 needed. 8,000?! No! I only have a thousand! Almost 2,000. That's a lot! What the f- Jill is curious about a Daruma she saw. Getting one will prevent her from becoming too distracted. Oh no, Daruma. Oh, boss left the hoodie anyway. Shop. <laughs> no! Japanese souvenir that has seen better days still has a vir vintage charm to it. Virtual. <laughs> Just buy it. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, you better be pleased with yourself. I'm so upset. Let's get through this quickly, because is... oh, I really need to eat. God, I might have to pop it in the microwave again. Apollo Bank is getting attacked. Seems like a lot happened while I was gone. Some deep shit happened right there.
Underwear you can change with a voice command with something you really want in your life, Nano Camo has you covered, already providing consumer versions of their advanced nano machine fabric. They plan to release a line of underwear that can change its looks with a spoken word. No more stains in your white panties, just change its color to black and you'll barely notice. That won't change the smell though, they're not that advanced. We expect an increase in sales next year thanks to this innovative product, a PR representative told the Augmented Eye. I'm already using them super comfy if you ask me, why don't you just get dark underwear? <laughs> And that was it for this part. Uh, a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. But I do appreciate the fact that we got to hang out with Donna. Uh, and, uh, it's always interesting seeing Dorothy interacting with other people, but... The time that I decided to jump back into this, <laughs> not the best time. I hope Gil is okay because we still have whatever's happening with the bank. I don't know, there isn't really much to say considering the majority majority of this, I would say, was mostly about connecting with Donna. Uh, I'm curious. I could look up how long this game is, but at the same time, probably won't. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to see it say Chapter 2. Oh god, what was that? Yeah, uh, I'm really distracted right now because I have food staring at me. <laughs> I hope you guys- oops. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I hope to see you in the next one. Uh, I'll try to start getting these out again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have a good day and a good night. Bye!